Welcome to MLB The Show, The Show. The only place to get baseball, entertainment, video games, and this video of 51 year old Gary Sheffield hitting moonshots with a lit stogie in his mouth. Oh my god. <laughs> Enough fooling around. Let's get down to business. Leading off our interview lineup for today is Arizona Diamondbacks pitcher John Duplantier, who sits down with our very own Chris Longo to discuss his games in the MLB The Show Players League. Then we'll catch up with Orioles outfielder Dwight Smith Jr. Finally, we check in with DAZN's Adnan Verk, co-host the Changeup, to see how baseball broadcasters are keeping fresh while we wait for the season to begin. It's also Febreze, it actually doubles. <laughs> oh, it smells great in here. Now let's check out the moments of the week from the MLB The Show Players League. The playoff push heated up this week. Down to his final out, Gavin Lux shocked Jeff McNeil by smacking a go-ahead homer with Cody Bellinger. Harper! McNeil tied the game in the bottom half of the inning to send the contest to extras, then walked it off with Jake Marisnik. Back is the center fielder. Hey, let's go! Game over. He's my MVP. It's, it's not even close. Love to see that. A oh, free walk off center road. Hopefully, make the playoffs. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Trevor May found himself battling for a playoff spot and secured the victory over tournament number one seed Blake Snell. Let's go, Surge! Woo! The Rays legend takes down Blake Snell. Let's go! Who doesn't love a little league home run? Fernando Tatis Jr. goes inside the park on Brett Phillips. No! No! Oh, it's going to roll all the way to the it's wall. It's in the ball. It's in the ball. Oh, no. 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 Oh, no
and whether it's a not it's never in a good or a bad way. It's just different, right? So like um, I always tell this story, Hunter Pence, we were working out together a couple off seasons ago in Houston and I was actually, believe it or not, hitting off a tee in a cage because um, I was about to go to double A. I was like, okay, I'm about to start swinging. And so let me just make sure I can swing a bat and stay healthy. And so Hunter Pence came into the cage and was like, hey, mind if I hit with you? And I was like, dude, you can kick me out for all I care. Like, come on. So Hunter let me stay in the cage and swing with him a little bit. And he just dropped some nuggets on me, dude, that just rocks my world and made me see um, pitching and myself, or at least the, the self-exploration of myself as a pitcher in a different light, right? Like just rocks my boat. And I was like, okay, if this is, this just took two minutes, what else is out there? So um, being able to just pick guys' brains in the off seasons, especially, like this offseason, I went to LA and I got to talk to Syndergaard, Lorenzen, Flaherty, uh, Free, Giolito. I mean, it's been it's been a great experience. You know, you just there's there's always something to learn from somebody. Is the level of trash talk going to be elevated when you finally do get back out in the field and get to see some of these player league foes on the real diamond? There'll be an added sense of lighthearted lighthearted competitiveness i think an added sense not to say that they're it'll be completely like okay it's just all fun and games we're competing we're talking trash and this and that and nobody cares like no when, when ball comes back it's going to be tooth and nail yet again but um i think it'll be more fun right like you see like the big debate has been oh let the kids play and just let the kids play bat flips and celebrations on strikeouts and stuff and and I think this players league, one thing that happens is like I'm now freaking out when I hit a home run. Mr. Kelly! Mr. Kelly! I'm getting pumped when I'm hitting homers with Carson Kelly, you know? So I think it gives me a little bit of a window into how pumped these guys are when they hit a home run in the bottom of the eighth or in the bottom of the ninth. So last year you made it to the show for the first time. What was it like seeing yourself in a video game? Unreal. I think it was even more cool than seeing myself was hearing my family's last name, you know. Duplantier. Because it's, it's a unique last name. Um, I don't know too many Duplantiers. So to hear the name Duplantier in a video game and pronounce correctly, and if you go create a player, you can select Duplantier as the name and they pronounce it correctly in the road to the show. Like my little brother's been playing the video, my video, my, the show, he's been doing a road to the show with his own player. He, get, he gets to choose our name and the game announces him um, with his nickname, of course. And like that, that is probably cooler than seeing myself, you know. Um, I could always make somebody that kind of looked like me maybe not have the same mannerisms or the same wind up or, or repertoire, but I could always, yeah, I could always make the repertoire and put a goatee on them and some glasses, but to hear our name is probably the coolest part. And now we have a very special question from our junior reporter, Dylan. Hi, John, this is Dylan. What advice can you give little leaguers who want to be pitchers? Dylan, thanks for the question, buddy. It's a great question. Um, I think, the best way to strengthen your arm, I mean, especially as, as a young person, it's just to throw, man. Um, just throw and, and fall in love with throwing and working on probably your mechanics. I would say the mechanics are the, probably, at a young age, the best, the best way to maximize arm strength in, in a young kid. Um, once you get good mechanics, then you have a good foundation, and then you can build on that by throwing. Um, I wouldn't worry about – too much strength worth work, strength work or balls or anything like that um right, right now just work on throwing correctly and then throwing as we're filming this right now there's still a bunch of games to be played but if you can get hot and make the playoffs and run the table and win the championship where would you be hosting your parade and what charity would the winnings go to i think it just depends on when when i decide to host it um because if if so by some miracle you know like if we get to be back and playing ball here soon um, I might save my parade for like when I'm actually back with the boys and we'll just have like an IG live parade where like the team that won the championship, we're sitting there partying. That'd be dope. 
Um, so I get to have Clutch Carson in the midst, Nikki Dimes, Mr. Routine, got Derek David Peralta. So, you know, the guys that, that made it happen, um, Jake Lamb, I mean, just all those guys. Um, that'd be sick. And then um, charity. I, I think I like going – I might go somewhere like Boys and Girls Club America, um, something like that. John, thanks so much for joining us. We really look forward to seeing you out there on the real mound soon. Oh, can't wait. Thanks for having me. Five episodes in and all we've shown you are digital highlights. But that ends now. Dongs of the Week is going viral. The people needed dongs. And a new viral video sensation. TikTok Baseball Baby answered the call. After a slow start, TikTok Baby slowly made adjustments to his game. Either this kid is sign stealing too, or we have a genuine baseball legend on our hands. Opposing pitchers are also going to have to wear diapers playing against him. Look at this one, it's goo goo ga ga gone. I'm not saying this kid is juicing, but someone go check those juice boxes. On the digital baseball fields, Juan Soto walked it off against Joey Gallo, and he was elated. They win it! Oh, Santa Maria! <laughs> Players League fan favorite Brett Phillips put some showmanship into his home run trots by rocking a Royals helmet and blasting the air horn in celebration. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Naturally, his showboating led to retaliation from Bo Bichette. Oh! No, you didn't Let's go now to Chris Longo, who's standing by with Orioles outfielder Dwight Smith Jr. Get up! Get up! Let's go! Let's go! That's what I'm talking about! Let's go, bro! What in a bat, man! How many pitches was that? I don't even know. I blacked out. Wait, we're joined right now by Baltimore Orioles outfielder Dwight Smith Jr. Welcome to MLB The Show. The Show. How you doing, Dwight? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing well. Thank you. So we're recording this the day after you clinched a playoff berth in the MLB The Show Players League. Did you give yourself a champagne shower uh, in celebration last night no i didn't i didn't have like a winning cigar or anything like that but um I, i'll if i win this thing I, i'll be sure to do something what's been your favorite moment so far in uh, the league just just be able to like meet some of the guys i haven't met throughout the league and just playing against them and seeing what they're doing during this time and just having fun with this whole league yes, I've, I've enjoyed interacting with the fans i've, I've enjoyed every part of it you think uh, Nico Goodrum's ever going to live down that beatdown you gave him? Uh, is that go fall? In there. <laughs> and that runner will go no further than second as there are two more. <laughs> oh my God. He, he, was, he was pretty bad after that, but he, he enjoyed it too. We actually, after that, after that game, we actually got on Call of Duty and playing with some Warzone afterwards. Ended up getting a couple wins, so he kind of squashed that game. <laughs> so if you're able to win this whole thing, obviously the money goes to charity. Is there a charity you're looking to, to donate to? We actually have a couple charities with uh, the Baltimore Orioles um, to relieve with the uh, coronavirus and all that stuff going on. So I'll probably go and pick that one for sure. That's great. Uh, how, and how have you been kind of staying prepared just in case uh, you guys get the call that the season's uh, going to start resuming and spring training is going to pick up again? But except I've been working out in my garage and throwing with my dad. I really haven't done that much since high school. Um, I've been hitting BP in the cage and I've actually been facing live pitching past like week. So well, I've been facing like Will Smith with the Braves and Cam Bedrosian with the Angels. So. I'm just getting all kind of different looks, just and I'm giving them feedback. They're giving me feedback, so it's it's all it's all working well. So, Dad's the personal trainer right now. 
Yeah, yeah. But he but he don't want to work out with me. That's the thing. Some of my workouts is is way different from what he's used to doing. So he's he's out on that. Playing in this players league, how has that changed your perception of what esports is? It got me it got me into a new hobby. I might start streaming more. Um, like as soon as I started this, I was like, wow, there's actually a lot of people tuning in and watching this. So I might I might just keep continuing to do it while we're um, in my downtime, I'll probably do some different sports games or Call of Duty, whatever. I'll probably switch it up from MLB to show because I've been doing that like almost every day. So I'll probably mix up a little bit. We're seeing the interaction between you guys and the fans. Uh, it's really fun and unique to watch. How do you think baseball could keep that momentum going uh, and kind of market you guys uh, maybe in a, in a stronger way to have a better connection to the fans? I think that would be cool, like seeing the other side of a uh, – like, what do we do? Like, joking around and talking trash to each other. I think I always love watching mic'd up on NFL games, like mic'd up NBA games. So if you put that in the baseball, I'm sure you'll find a lot of great content around the league. For sure. Is there talk amongst you guys about running this back for a season two, maybe like during the off season? You never know we might plan in the future with this because – I could see this definitely coming back and probably bigger and better. The one thing I probably wish we could do is actually like talk to each other at the same time. So kind of talk some trash just so we can knock somebody off their game a little bit. I think that would be even more hilarious to get people's reaction. But the way this tournament has gone, it's just taken off. Hi, Dwight. My name is Cheryl and I'm Logan's mommy. And this is Logan. He would like to know who your favorite baseball player was growing up? My favorite player growing up was, uh, I really admire watching Ken Griffey Jr. Uh, he, he was one of the main reasons why I wanted to play outfield, like Rob, go Rob Homers, go chase Hawk stuff down. And I even, it was to the point where I even mimicked his swing in like real life games as a kid. And my dad got on me about, like, you can't be King Griffey Jr., you got to be Dwight Smith Jr. So, King Griffey Jr. is probably one of my all-time favorites to watch, and I really enjoyed him playing. What was it like uh, seeing yourself in a video game for the first time? Oh, seeing myself. The first time I seen myself on a video game, I was like, yeah, that's definitely not my face. Uh, my hair was definitely not my hair. Um, but they had my leg kick, so I was kind of happy about that. And I had my own little signature style so I was like yeah that's pretty cool what was your first baseball game uh video game and memory of that MVP baseball was probably one of my favorites like the one with May Ramirez was on the cover I think it was 05 04 something like that that was one of my favorites slugfest was up there oh the college baseball game that was cool I would I wish they would bring like college games back no love for backyard baseball oh I, yeah I can't forget backyard baseball I love that <laughs> Pete Wheeler Pablo Sanchez, if they're not in your one and two in your lineup, I don't know what are you doing. No, the, yeah, that that's an all-time favorite too. Wow, backyard baseball. That's, that was like probably one of the first games I played for yeah. sure. It's a classic, man. Well, Dwight Smith Jr., thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. We're looking forward to hopefully hopefully seeing you win the whole thing in the players league, but more importantly, getting back out on the real field and, and hitting some homers. E either way, I'll be I'll be satisfied. So, man, well, thank you and, and best of luck this season. All right, thanks again. Now let's check out the final standings for the Players League. Blake Snell edged Joey Gallo for the regular season crown. Lucas Giolito snuck into the top eight with a victory over Amir Garrett in the final game of the regular season, which aired on ESPN2 on Wednesday night. The Yankees' Tommy Canely and the league commissioner Trevor May just missed the cut. Fan favorites Fernando Tatis Jr., Amir Garrett, and Brett Phillips were good but not good enough to make the big dance. As for the bottom of the field, we may need to find Red Sox pitcher Eduardo Rodriguez, an eSports coach in the offseason. The playoff field is set and the matchups are as follows. Blake Snell and Tampa Bay take on Gavin Lux and the Dodgers. Baltimore's Dwight Smith Jr. squares off against Jeff McNeil and the Mets. The Rangers' Joey Gallo is set to bring the thunder versus the Cubs' Ian Happ. And Lucas Giolito and the White Sox face off against Bo Bichette's Toronto Blue Jays. The playoffs take place from May 1st to May 3rd, 
and you could find the broadcast on FS1, ESPN, and ESPN2. Check out MLB.com slash Players League for more info. Well, welcome to MLB The Show, the show, the co-host of Change Up on The Zone, Adnan Burke. How you doing? I'm doing great, Chris. Thanks for having me. I know you're in New York, at least, Village. I'm here in North Jersey, so we are bonded right now by being uh, really hit hard by this epidemic, pandemic, and uh, I hope you're keeping well. I find that um, we're doing all right, but I'm sure it goes in ebbs and flows like you, like for everybody. I mean, you get the cabin fever, you go for a 10-minute walk, you come back. When's life going to return to normal? Don't know. Grateful for good health, grateful for family, and obviously grateful to all the first responders out there. We don't have baseball this year, and, and that's something the weather's starting to get a little bit nicer, and, and you know, my body's just not used to you know, sitting at City Field. Uh, how's it for you? Because uh, it, it kind of calls to mind the 94 strike, and I was a little bit young for it, but uh, what's it been like not having baseball this year? Yeah, 94 was pretty miserable. I was 16, and uh, I still recall how upsetting that was you know being canadian from toronto i grew up in rural eastern ontario i remember 94 very well because the Atlanta expos fans were just devastated because of how great that team was and how likely they would have been i think to win the world series i believe there was 74 and 40 or 74 and 44 something like that but that incredible team you know with pedro and larry walker marquis chris and all the rest of it so that was certainly a crippling time, and right now, you're right, I just feel so restless. We're obviously missing the game. We do recognize what's far more important, which is everyone's health. You know, baseball is just a game. I do think when it comes back, it's going to be a real healing mechanism for the country and the way the sports can always be. Something we've talked about on this show over the course of these four episodes is how baseball could better market, how baseball could better market its stars, uh, like Mike Trout. The whole first episode was about how we can make Mike Trout more famous. Um, but I think baseball is doing a really fun job right now with this players league that they're running through MLB the show. Just before we started this interview, they had announced that ESPN and Fox Sports, they're going to start airing uh, the players league. Now, during spring training, they mic'd up players and that went over really well on social media. How do you think baseball, uh, when we do see the field again, could kind of take some of this momentum from spring training, from engaging with fans through this players league and really take off with it? Yeah, I think definitely what ends up happening is that people see this and say, okay, what rules can we do? Meaning, as far as television-wise now, like, you know, I'm watching CNN more than I ever have in my life. You see so many people using Skype or other forms of media. I think now it's going to happen. Listen, listen, rather than paying hundreds of dollars to send a camera to a guy's house, you know what, just do it off Skype, do it off your iPhone. If it's a little glitchy, who cares? It'll work out. So I think, you know, networks are always looking to save a few bucks, and if the technology is good enough, that's one that they could do. In terms of baseball accessibility, yeah, I mean, hopefully that umpire is going to be Mike. I think that's great. I think anytime fans get that, whenever you're watching an NFL game, people love that. NBA games, the coaches don't say much. I mean, clearly a guy like Craig Pompis doesn't give me anything, but people just like hearing stuff inside the huddle, so I think that could help. A guy like Rookie Betts is great. I remember a few years ago when I was at ESPN, on a spring training game, he was so funny, talking about bowling and all the different passions and interests in life. So I completely agree with you. I think we, you know, Try to do a better job of making the players more well-known throughout America. I'm just kind of going back. Like, do you remember playing your first baseball video game, and what game was that? For myself, I love RBI baseball. When I was 10, 11, 12, 13 years old, I come up to school. First thing I do would be play video games. Uh, Mike Socha, for some reason, had a great bat in that game. I, I, a friend of mine was just texting with me, Chris Legento, our PR guy, just on. He said he got one of his kids' four year olds in the games. He got one of the old systems. He said, which is great because the games are like six bucks. So I said, beautiful. The kid has no idea anyways. He just thinks the technology is fine. So if somebody can wrestle me up a little RBI baseball, I may have to dust off my hands and uh, get my controllers working again because I, I would have such a blast. I can't tell you how many years I did playing that game. For our viewers who haven't had a chance to check out The Zone yet and change up, can you tell us a little bit about uh, kind of the vibe you guys are going for on the show? Well, we have a blast. Me and Scott Rogalski, you know, I've worked for almost 20 years. I've been on TV, and Scott's the first of a guy I get to work with who is an actual comic, and he's so funny, and he loves baseball like I do. And we have a blast. It's a, it's a whip-around show, so we show you all the games of the night as they happen, so we're always whipping around. What's better than one game? How about 15 baseball games? And we show all of it to you at the best moments as they happen, all the best players, best plays, etc. And then we offer our own commentary and crack jokes and, and have a blast and tell stories, do plenty of lists. Sports field, movie field, we all love lists. And you mentioned the Cestus Barbecue guys. Jake and Jordan are both hugely talented. They're exactly what we need which is young guys who love baseball and are really passionate about the game and irreverence. And Lauren Gardner is wonderful. She's a part of our show. She did uh, weekdays last year. She did weekends this year. 
and she's smart, loves baseball, a lot of fun. So we don't take ourselves too seriously, which, as you know, is probably the first lesson of TV and probably one of the first lessons of life. Don't take yourself too seriously. Have fun, be a fan, and enjoy lots of great baseball. So hopefully we'll be back sooner rather than later on DAZN. Thank you so much for joining us. And, yeah, we hope to see you back on there uh, where you belong, calling some games and bringing us some really fun baseball commentary. All right. Thanks so much, Chris. Stay safe. We'll leave you with some news fresh off the hot stove. Our sources tell us that the Baltimore Orioles are trying to sign TikTok baseball baby to a 10-day contract. We hope you like it in Baltimore, buddy. Thanks for watching and we'll be the show of the show, and we'll see you next time. Like the sound of this video? All of our music was licensed from Soundstripe, a subscription-based royalty-free music library for filmmakers, podcasters, YouTubers, and more. Soundstripe. Keep creating.